here in Times Square with Marta Atienza, all the way from the Philippines. Can you introduce what we're about to see? The work is called Our Islands. The work is showing my friends and neighbors from Bantayan Island doing an underwater parade. So what happens in this Atiatian festival is that the men actually start to express what happens in that year, but we have chosen to do it underwater. And so I spoke with all the guys who had certain costumes for different years and asked them if they would want to repeat it underwater. And really also talking about what they were trying to say with the costumes that they had. This procession, you can even describe it as a kind of silent protest in a way. To show what is really going on in the Philippines and specifically in Bantayan. You know, we have the Jaguar in the Philippines, we had the Super Typhoon Haiyan, and the way that my friends portrayed the Super Typhoon was really how we survived it. With the rising seas, islands are disappearing. And this is not just a reality for us, but this is also a reality for people here. But I think it's just less obvious for people here because they're so disconnected from their sea and they're so disconnected from the natural world. I think what's really special about being here in Times Square is that everybody's coming here and everybody wants to be here. I mean, you can feel it now. There's people from all over the world. And so to have my friends and our story be taken here, even for me, it's a bit overwhelming, you know, like it's kind of the commercial center and it's where everybody comes together. But how do we create a silent moment to watch something so slow with issues that are affecting us on the other side of the world? Maybe people can take the time and realize that it's also affecting them. What inspired you to focus on the fisher folk and the indigenous peoples of the Philippines in particular? Why this island? My father's from Bantayan Island, and I partly grew up on Bantayan. So I had the need to understand this connection we had with the sea. I also could see the changes happening around me. This work was in 2017, but we already started working together in 2010. I was filming men at sea. I was filming international seafarers and local fishermen. And we were dealing with the dislocation going on in our community because international seafarers earn in dollars and in euros. And the fisher folks actually don't earn that much, uh, especially with the sea being damaged. And that has to do with climate change and rising of sea temperatures, but also other complex issues like overfishing, um, illegal fishing. My father himself, he was a, an international seafarer. My grandfather always told him that he never had to leave the island because they had everything. They had an abundance of fish and they were fine. He didn't even have to go to school. So it was his own, his own choice to leave. In the span of his life, you can see these drastic changes of the ocean, the sea being so destroyed, there being so little fish to catch. And, you know, the reason why people do compressor diving is because they're desperate. I wanted to use the video as a way for us to have these conversations. I wanted to understand more about what it was like to make this film, um, what was involved, and also your decision to film it underwater, because this procession is usually above ground. We had 16 divers for the shoot, but then we also had safety people. We had to build like these bamboo structures to stand on because the sea level changes, right, on different times. This area is in the north of the island in Malbago, where there is damage, but not so much of a current because we had to film and we had to be safe. I worked together with a lot of young people that I had worked with for more than 10 years already. Technically, they had gotten so good that they had figured out which cameras we were gonna use. We used small action cameras, underwater cameras, 
found ways to connect them to our mobile phones so that we could see what we were doing up on the water. And the fishermen really chose the spot where we would have enough time that we would be deep enough, but not too deep. Boats running with the compressor engines on. And I had like a, a metal tube and I would bang on this tube as a kind of, to keep the rhythm up so that they would know whose turn it was to go. They were actually walking in circles. When we were on land, I was saying what we were gonna do, but when we were getting on the water, that was their territory, and I had to respect the spirit of the sea. When we finished filming, all the wives came. We had 24 chickens that they had slaughtered, cleaned, cooked together. It was such a long build up to kind of ending it with eating together and then kind of thinking about what it's gonna be because it took quite a while for post-production. By the end of it, we presented it to everybody to kind of give everybody an idea and I had slowed it down and I remember everybody complaining, saying, we want it faster because we move fast underwater. We're not that slow, you know? But the images that you see here in Times Square, they're actually slowed down because I want people to take the time. You know, everything is so fast. Even when we're standing here in Times Square, people are always kind of rushing and they want like quick results, quick shots. But I think the kind of processes that I go through with my friends and my community in Bantayan is that we're slow cooking everything. We're slow cooking topics. We're slow cooking identifying issues. The process of making something simple like a, a video together helps us kind of become a community and deal with things that are actually important to us.